Have you ever wished you could turn your incredibly thin and light iPad into a laptop? I sure have, especially when I want to get some serious typing done in bed or on the couch. Well this is the Bridge 10.2, a premium Bluetooth keyboard for the latest 7th gen iPad with the 10.2 inch screen. Bridge makes one for every iPad model, and it's probably the best product out there for an authentic iPad as laptop experience. It really is premium. It's very well constructed, made of aluminum. Aluminium, aluminium, aluminium. Aluminium, aluminium, aluminium. And it precisely matches the size, thickness, and color of the iPad. It has custom hinges for each iPad model, so it's important that you get the right one for your size. The hinges are great. They hold the iPad steady at any viewing angle, and it's relatively easy to get the iPad in and out of the clips. The keyboard is heavy enough to give a comfortable lap typing experience, and it looks pretty sweet closed up in a clamshell with that perfect fit and color match. I wish it was a little easier to open from that closed clamshell though. The MacBook-like thumb tab for opening the lid is so tiny, it's barely helpful. The keyboard itself matches the premium build of the chassis. The keys have a nice matte finish which feel good. The keys are thoughtfully laid out with a function row that's particularly suited to the iPad's operating system. There's a home button that functions just like the home button on the iPad, if yours still has a home button. A single press goes to the home screen, a double press opens the multitasking view, a triple press opens accessibility shortcuts, like toggling assistive touch for mouse support, if you have that set up. One of the best features of this keyboard is that it's backlit, which is great for nighttime typing. And there's a function key that cycles through three levels of brightness. I think the excellent lapability of this keyboard makes the backlighting even more useful, since there's more of a chance that you'll be typing with this in the dark from time to time, whether on a couch in the evening, or in bed. There's a dedicated key for locking and unlocking the iPad, shortcuts for screen brightness, volume, and music controls, a key for toggling the software keyboard, a key for checking the battery status, a key for Bluetooth pairing, and a power button with a multicolored indicator light. On the bottom left where the function key is on a MacBook, there's a dedicated key for calling Siri. And finally, a nice touch, there's an indicator light on the caps lock key. But of course, the main reason to get this kind of product is for typing, and I was really pleased with the typing experience. The key travel and bounce are satisfying with no doubled letters or spaces. The key layout is slightly cramped at this size, but I adjusted to it easily. The palms of my hands rest on the edge of the keyboard, which is sharp enough to be a little uncomfortable, but again, that was pretty easy to get used to. Well, so far so good. But how much does this premium keyboard cost? Less than Apple's smart keyboards, as a matter of fact. This one retails for $130, but I found it new on eBay for significantly less. Bridge also runs their own promotional prices and open box discounts. Overall, it's a great product and a great little keyboard. Well worth the price. But should you really get one? That's a little more complicated. If you mainly type in one app at a time, I think you'd be really happy with it. But if you're heavily into multitasking or need to do a lot of text editing, you might be less enthusiastic. I was really hoping for a laptop-like experience, but the more I used it, well, the more disappointed I became. Not because it didn't feel great or type great, but because it was missing something. And that something is a trackpad. In fact, the lack of a trackpad soon became an insurmountable annoyance. Having to constantly touch the screen to navigate, especially when trying to go back and forth between apps, was aggravating. And at this screen angle, the four-finger swipe gesture between apps feels strained. Reaching the apps in the dock was also awkward. Pulling up the dock is difficult with the swipe up gesture since the back edge of the keyboard is right there. And even reaching your finger down into the corner to touch or drag the dock apps feels a little weird. Yes, there is a keyboard shortcut to bring up the dock, but it's not really a one-handed gesture. 
So if your hand is hovering around the screen and you want to access the dock, you have to take your hand away from the screen, perform the keyboard shortcut, and then go back in with your hand to do the awkward dock reach. It seems petty, but it really started grating on me over time. And of course, when doing heavy typing, having to reach up to select text or drag the cursor around is, well, a drag. If you only use this keyboard when sitting at a desk with a Bluetooth mouse, it would probably be a better experience. But most of this is not Bridge's fault. Apple has been very slow in adopting system cursor and keyboard support for the iPad. Bridge made a really good iPad keyboard here. In fact, it's probably the best iPad keyboard if a keyboard is all you need. But I realized that I need a better experience interacting with the iPad when it's attached to a keyboard. Frankly, I need a trackpad with Apple's multi-touch gesture support. It's so obvious. Two-finger scroll, three-finger swipe between full-screen apps, cursor selection, pinches and zooms, etc. But alas, such a product doesn't exist. Or at least it didn't exist until last week. Apple just announced that it's building an iPad keyboard with a trackpad, and they are adding a uniquely iPad-styled cursor support this week with the iPad OS 13.4 update. Bridge is already developing a keyboard with a trackpad for the iPad Pro, and it will be out of the gate before Apple's. And Logitech announced a keyboard case with a trackpad for the non-Pro iPads. From the looks of them, and not to mention the bazillion cheapo Chinese versions on Amazon, I would say that Bridge will still be the winner for the most laptop-like of these, as far as how good it feels to actually use it on your lap and it will be far less expensive than Apple's. But I have no idea if Bridge will build trackpads into its smaller keyboards for non-pro iPads. Even so, now that Apple has finally embraced cursor support, I think we'll see some decent options on the market very soon. Here are some final thoughts. After several days of keyboard testing, when I took the iPad out and held it in my hands, navigating it with my fingers, I realized how this device was meant to be experienced. It was designed as a touch-first device. The Apple Pencil expands its capability even further. But when it comes to typing, it really needs a keyboard. And as I found out, if it has a keyboard, it really needs a trackpad. Having the versatility to move between all of these modes with little friction is an amazing prospect. And it seems like that future may be right around the corner. So if I were you, I would wait for that trackpad. <laughs>